name's Dr. Richmond Lohan, I'm the fish vet. So today we're presented with a case, if we have a look uh, closer here, we've got um, the owners moved in about 10 years ago and has had no problems in the first six years of living here. Um, ever since he got the, uh, the pond cleaned about two and a half years ago um, or so, uh, we've had fish dying, just single ones lying on the side and then it's uh, sort of dying relatively regularly but not, but not mass mortalities. Uh, there's one here lying on its side, you can zoom in uh, with this. So it's lying uh, next to the, uh, I guess on the tank floor on its side, looks quite more abundant. Looks like it's got covered in um, excess mucus a little bit, so we'll catch them out and have a closer look and we'll also check all the other fish health out. Uh, they've had one new introduction, uh, it's a yellow fish about a year ago, uh, but no other signs of ill health. So we'll first start with water quality testing and then we'll test the fish itself microscopically. So just explain to you the water testing. So we tested it, um, basically the ammonia nitrite and nitrate are all zero, which is really good. Uh, it means that your system is in balance, you're doing enough water changes, uh, you're not overfeeding them. Uh, the pH is at neutral and your buffering capacity is at 3 degrees which is good, it means that your pH is going to be uh, pretty stable. Uh, so the next thing, we're just going to catch the fish out. Uh, initially we'll, we'll catch the one that's lying on the side. So what we're doing here is we're catching our goldfish from our holding net and having a closer look at it, you can see the Fins, our dorsal fins are a bit frayed. There's some significant damage to that. Um, we're gonna lift up the. You can also see that he's quite thin, and we're just gonna lift up the curriculum, take a gill biopsy, and some skin break. And from there, we're gonna place that on the glass slide, release the goldfish, and examine the slide under the microscope. So we just get a bit of focus here, and starting with coarse focus and then fine focus, and we're looking for anything that's moving pretty much. And if you come have a closer look, we'll have a show you what's under the microscope. So this is a gill biopsy, yeah. and you can see that little worm that's moving around there in the middle. Right there, yeah. Yes, so that's yes. a gill flute. Yes. They're very small, and if you have a look, when we do a gill biopsy, we're only examining this bit of the gills, mm. and that guy is living quite far down. So that's what's killing them. Yeah, mm. and you can see there's quite a lot of excess mucus. Normally, uh, you can see this browny bit here on the yeah. right. That that shouldn't be there. That layer of mucus. It should be more flat. And there's a bit of excess mucus there. So, okay, to wrap this up, basically what we've found is that we had um, fish dying um, individually, not massive mortalities, just one at a time. Uh, and what we found also microscopically, we had a lot of gill hyperplasia, a lot of mucus on them, but we couldn't see the parasite. And the problem with that was um, the owner had already treated with a, another drug. So it makes diagnosis very difficult. So uh, there were two fish that were moribund and the fate for them was that they're going to die anyway. So we had to we euthanize them humanely and we took a really deep gill sample. And from that we were able to see uh, the gill fluids, which we were suspecting uh, given the pathology and the history. Uh, and then we are then with a definitive diagnosis, we know what we're going to treat and we know what's going to work. So in terms of treatment, um, because the owner has already used some sort of a drug, uh, we say that tomorrow we're going to start our treatment. We're going to do some partial water change first, uh, and then we're going to target the flute with Praziquantel. Then we're going to mix it up a little bit in two weeks' time, uh, because the water conditions are quite cold. Uh, we're going to do a formalin treatment, uh, because you can't give them too much exposure of formalin repeatedly. Um, and I'm suspecting that that drug that the owner had used had formalin. That's why we will start with Prezi, then formalin, and then two weeks after that we'll do another Prezi Condel treatment, which is a targeted approach uh, towards a gill fluid. So
they have been called out to investigate the cause of a recent death of Goldie the goldfish. Um, basically, her presenting signs were that she developed bloat and dropsy um, and died over the course of about two days. Um, so if fish has died, we can't do anything about it, but that's a problem still exists. So the owner is worried that her other fish are going to succumb to the same illness. Um, so the owner has treated with a combination of different drugs provided by the fish store. Um, it didn't quite work for Goldie, so we're here to investigate uh, the reason for her death uh, and also to see whether the rest of them are at risk. So what we're doing here is we've caught our fish and we're just going to take a gill biopsy and skin mucus scrape. And to do that we'll just wait till the fish is um, sitting still. Lift up the operculum and take it. Okay, so um, from the investigation of um, at least three different fish, we found the presence of gill flukes, which are known as dactylogyrus. Uh, we did not find them in the gills, but we found them on the skin, so there must be sufficient uh, numbers for them to actually be living on the skin. Um, with the gill flukes, there's a tendency for them to be living in the sort of deep parts of the gill. So uh, that means that sometimes we're unable to find them on the gills. Uh, but the evidence of them being out on the skin means that there are significant numbers. So gill flukes aren't parasites that will kill instantly and straight away. They slowly build up in numbers. They cause um, anemia, um, which means that they go pale in the gills. Uh, and then they can't carry enough oxygen because they have low red cell count, a low amount of red of blood. Um, so it's a chronic disease and, and because the gill foods are egg layers, uh, we're going to give them multiple treatments uh, that will target the susceptible stages when they are in the water column. So our treatment drug of choice is Preziquantel. So here for this um, aquarium, which is about 150 liters, uh, we've measured out 750 milligrams of the medicine. And with this one, what you do, uh, water temperatures are about 26 degrees, so we're going to be treating every five days uh, with two more repeats. So basically, just add water to the drug, um, shake it up really, really, really well, and then just distribute that evenly throughout the tank. And within uh, 24 to 48 hours, you'll see the fish, um, the mentation and the appetite will start to improve. Okay, so um, from Bert, Whitey, Bronzer, and other yet to be named fishes, um, that's all. And thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you subscribe to get updates for our new releases of videos. And have a fantastic week.